and welcome back to Studio Tamara, the mystical paintress. I've got my little buddy here, my Keaton Da Vinci here with me. He's going to say hi. He's getting big, so I'm going to let him take off. Uh, we have an exciting day today. Tell me, does this look like a pipe? Because it's called an Indian pipe or a ghost pipe. And so today I just want to talk about this crazy plant that I found when I was out on a nature walk with Rod Doberman this morning. So, well, that was a bright light. Um, so I'm super excited about this plant because it it's just got all these incredible, incredible qualities. So first of all, this is called an Indian pipe. It is from, I took some notes. I, I went and I researched it and I am gathering together a book um, of all my local uh, trees and plants and medicinal things. I think it's so important to know what is in your area. So I was walking my dog and I saw a bunch of these sticking up out of the ground. And I just, if I ever, forage or, or take anything out of nature, I usually just take a very little bit because I don't want to disrupt the plant or the ecosystem. Um, so I've got some fabulous notes I can share with you if you've never seen one of these. So this is from the Monotropia family. I might have said that wrong. Um, but it's the same family. Um, acid soil lovers like rhododendrons, azaleas, um, blueberries too. Uh, and if you could see inside, and let's see if I can get this inside for you. See the little bitty, it's got a real strange smell like, um, uh, like uh, it's woody scented, almost like a musk perfume. It says online it's like ammonia, but I don't smell ammonia at all. It's, it's, it's like something you've never ever smelled before in your life. Um, okay, so this is the cool little trivia part is that Emily Dixon called it, Emily Dickinson called it the preferred flower of life and it's on the cover um, of her book. So it's creepy. It's called the corpse plant, the ghost plant. Um, it's got this pink white translucent color. Let me see if I can get the light on it so you could see it. Um, and as it ages, it gets these little black spots. It has scales instead of leaves. And um, I have some pictures from when I was in the woods that I'm going to share with you, too. So that'll be pretty cool for you to see how they grow. They grow about three to nine inches tall. Um, and, okay, so this is what I found out is that it's an anomaly in the plant kingdom. Um... Let's see here. It can make its own food. It is found in the woods, um, the deep, dark woods. And one of only 3,000 non-photosynthetic plants in the world. This is a, actually a pretty rare plant. It's considered a wildflower. Um, and nothing eats it. Isn't that crazy? Absolutely nothing eats it. Okay, it's got a symbiotic relationship with the tree root. So this is a parasitic plant is what, what it's called because it grows and it gets its nourishment off of decomposing leaves and plants and tree roots, um, oak and beech in particular because of the moist, rich um, soil they grow in in the dark woods. Um, it's a possible remedy for psilocybin overdose. So I found that online. Um, I'm not sure about the validity of that. Um, but it is, I'm going to put it up close. You can see some pictures here in the woods. So here we go. Um, all right, it is a flowering plant. Has bell-shaped flowers. 
um, one of nature's weirdest wonders. It has no chlorophyll and doesn't depend on photosynthesis, grows in the dark. Um, let's see here. It has scales, not leaves. The bell-shaped flower is pollinated by small bumblebees. Tiny seeds release in the wind, and it only bears a single flower. So this is such a magical, wonderful thing to have this in my hand right now. And I could see why the, the Indians will call it a pipe, Indian pipe, because that's exactly what it's shaped like, right? Um, and I have some silly pictures in the woods uh, that you saw of my dog and I holding it. Um, it's a member of the blueberry family and the roto family, a parasitic plant that survives by borrowing nutrients from certain fungi, trees, and decaying plant. Um, it feels rubbery like a succulent. Okay, so to touch this, it's heavy, surprisingly heavy. And it feels kind of like a hen and chick succulent, if you know what those are. Um, all right, let's see here. Uses. This may be toxic. Um, not to touch so much, but anything that I read here uh, um, is information that I gathered online. I am not recommending that you go out in the woods and pick this and eat it or <laughs> or anything like that. No. Isn't that cool? As, as an artist, this is such a unique, beautiful, just great plant. I love it. Okay, so I'm going to hold this up and read you the uses has an important role in the ecosystem, so don't pick it. Wah, wah, well, shit. I read that after I'd already picked one when I knew they were safe to touch, but there were multiple. There were clumps of like 10 of them, at least 20 clumps like this, so I didn't really um, break the rules too much, I hope. I won't pick them again. Um, anyway, so edible tastes like asparagus. I'm not gonna eat it. I don't recommend you eat it, but it does kind of feel like asparagus and look like asparagus with the little scales and stuff. It's like a freaking alien plant. Do, 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 do. All right. Uh, it's a, what's this say? Powerful nervine. Okay. Gonna have to look that word up. Indian pipe root is used as a tonic, sedative, and antispasmatic. Powder is used for restlessness, pain, nervous irritability as a substitute for opium without any, what does that say? Deleterious influences. Also, people with seizures and that have fits. Um, okay, the whole plant is juiced for inflamed eyes, bunions, warts. The plant tea is ingested for aches and pains from colds and root tea for convulsions, epilepsy, sedative, and antispasmatic. So, the cool thing um, with that is that this is just a, a really rare, magical treasure. I came across walking uh, my dog in the woods today. I'm in Michigan, it's um, second week September. So, I just wanted to share this with you, and now I have to get back to painting. This is my Painting I did Saturday with the Michigan Plain Air Painters. Oh, hold on. Oh, that's better. In Kensington, a metro park, uh, I do have a lot of color. <laughs> eh, oh well. Um, I also did a mini painting Saturday on uh, Goldenrod. Those of you that are kind of herbal geeks like me and you like to learn all about plants and their medicinal properties and all that stuff, goldenrod is not what you're allergic to. Uh, ah, nope, it's not because the pollen is very heavy and adheres to the plant. So goldenrod is actually a remedy for people that suffer from hay fever. And it's mistaken for that all the time by people that are not familiar with, um, with herbs and, and such. So um, I've been doing an extensive program of learning about all of the plants and, and things in my area. So the goldenrod tea, if you remove the leaves prior to the flower blooming completely, so when it starts flowering, it's okay. After it's already done flowering, don't do it. Um, or if the leaves look moldy or anything, 
But I just took the leaves and I put them in a dehydrator and it's great for tea and it's, it's real good for, um, oh, you could go online and look that up. But anyway, I don't want to get on a tangent of something else. Today's topic is the Indian pipe. So if you like my videos, hit like, subscribe, it's free. Um, thank you to my Patreon followers. And I am going to start doing giveaways of my book, of my prints, of some of my art stuff, of some of my cool um, anti-itch remedy that I make out of jewel weed and witch hazel and things like that. Um, as soon as I hit 100 subscribers, I'm at 80, I'm stoked. But once I get to 100, I'm going to start the free giveaways. So if you're interested in that, subscribe and I will see you next time. Sending positive energy. Bye-bye.